right, 5.4, factoring simple trinomials. We have, a, what makes a simple trinomial? So here what you notice is x squared plus bx plus c. Let's look at specifically the a value. What do you notice that the a value is? Well, if the a value is 1, we call that a simple trinomial. So this is known as a simple trinomial because the value in front of the x squared is 1. All right, what about a simple trinomial? How do we factor? Well, I just want you to understand, it's like me giving, it's like playing Jeopardy. I give you the question and you give me the answer. All right, so, or sorry, I give you the answer and you give me the question. So the answer is going to be the expanded form of the questions that we've been doing up until now. And you have to find the actual question that it started off as. So that's what factoring is. It's the opposite of expanding. Knowing this, we go and look at the following. So let's look at the next particular piece and see what we're looking at. So B is known as the sum. So the value next to the x is known as the sum. The value next to the c is known as the product. So, no, so what we're trying to do is ask, you're to ask yourself the following question. What two numbers multiply, and that's your product, to give you c and add to give you b, that's your sum. So what two numbers multiply to give you the product and add to give you the sum? And that is the question you ask yourself each and every single time when you're factoring. Now, remember that factored form we had of a parabola are the following. I'm not really going to worry so much about this, folks, but basically what they're saying is the values of negative r plus negative s gives you the sum, and negative r times negative s gives you the product. And that's how you figure that out. All right, let's look at examples that work with this question. So we're going to look at lots of different examples. You're asked to factor completely if possible. So x squared plus 5x plus 4, x squared minus 5x minus 6, x squared minus 14x plus 45, x squared minus x minus 30, and finally, the last one on this page, x squared minus 4x plus 4. So ultimately, the answers are what I'm going to be checking. But what we're going to do is have a side over here with some work here. The work will not be marked or checked or value of anything, but it definitely will help you get the answers, which is exactly what you're looking for. So in the first example, it is a simple trinomial because the value next to the x squared is 1. And we now check and find the product. The product here is... 4, and the sum is 5. What two numbers multiply to give you 4 and add to give you 5? So what two numbers multiply to give you 4? Well, those would be 4 and 1. Because 4 times 1 gives you 4, and 4 plus 1 gives you 5. So, x plus 4 and x plus 1 are the factors for this question. All right, so here we go again. We decided it was 4 and 1, just like it is here. Okay, so x plus 4 and x plus 1 are the factors of x squared plus 5x plus 4. So we're unexpanding to get this question. Now, let's look at how this top is related to this question. x times x, when we expand it out, will be x squared. And 4 times 1, when we expand it out, will give us 4. So how do we get the 5x? Well, that is something called the OI check, the outside-inside. OI being the O and the I part of FOIL. And that will give us the answer that we have inside. So the outside, the outer 2, is plus x. The inner is plus 4x. So we have plus x plus 4x together makes, that's right folks, plus 5x. And that's the value right there. So that's how we get this particular question. x plus 4 times x plus 1 will actually expand to give you this. And you could always expand to check your answer. Let's look at x squared minus 5x minus 6. What's the product? The product is, that's right, negative 6. 
and the sum is negative 5. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you negative 5? Now be careful. A lot of you are thinking negative 2 and negative 3. Be careful, because when you multiply them, that does not give you negative 6. So think of other numbers. All right, hopefully you thought of them. Negative 6 and positive 1 will multiply to give us negative 6, and negative 6 plus 1 will give us negative 5. Now, let's say you knew, but you weren't sure which one will get the sign. You know here that the product is negative means that both signs have to be different. The middle sign determines the larger number. The middle sign will always tell you the larger number will have that value. So 6 is the larger number, it gets the negative, sorry, not value, but sign. So 6 gets the sign of the negative sum, and then negative 6 plus 1 will be negative 5. So what are our factors? They are x minus 6 and x plus 1. Doesn't matter. Could I put x plus 1 here and x minus 6? Well, folks, it really doesn't matter. The idea is that these are the factors that if I expand them out will give us this. And if they're reversed, you will still actually get this as your final answer. All right, x squared minus 14x plus 45. Product is 45. Sum is negative 14. What two numbers multiply to give us 45 and add to give us negative 14? So I can tell you that they're both going to be negative, so let's go through them. 1 and 45, both negative, will not result in negative 14. Negative 3 and 15, so we're going through all the possibilities to make 45. Negative 1 and negative 45, negative 3 and negative 15, and that does not give us negative 14. Negative 5 and negative 9, when I add those, yes, that will give us negative 14. So, what are our factors? They are x minus 9 and x minus 5. Again, you could have had these reversed, and that's okay too. All right, x squared minus x minus 30. Let's do that one. What two numbers multiply to give us negative 30? and add to give us negative 1. Yes, folks, it'll be negative 6 and positive 5. And notice I don't have any work there, but if you need it, there it is. Okay, and these are all the combinations, and that's why we have that. And find the last one is pretty easy. X, uh, what two numbers multiply give us 4 and add to give us negative, negative 4. And that'll be negative 2 and negative 2. But guess what, folks? You're not done with that question. Your final answer has to be the following. You will still lose a mark because you haven't simplified the question fully. It would be x minus 2 all squared because it's the same bracket twice. All right, moving on, moving forwards. Don't forget this one, guys. This is important. F x squared minus 5x plus 6, x squared minus 4x minus 12, 3x squared minus 9x minus 72, 4x squared minus 4x minus 12. All right, let's look at f. Try and do f. Stop the video now to try f. Okay, we're back. So, what two numbers multiply to give you positive 6 and add to give you negative 5? Well, hopefully you're thinking, all right, that must be negative 2 and negative 3. And you're right. So x minus 3 and x minus 2 are our factors for f. G, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you negative 4? What two numbers again multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you negative 4? That will be x minus 6 and x plus 2. All right, so negative 6 plus 2 gives us negative 4. Negative 6 times 2 gives us negative 12. Let's move forward. It's 3x squared minus 9x minus 72. Take out the 3. What are we left with? x squared minus 3x minus 24. And you're going to factor again 3 and 
how what did we do here? Let's re explain h for a second. Notice that x squared is not this trinomial is not simple. So the first thing you always have to try and do is to common factor whatever the variable is. So we want to common factor 3 out. We take out 3 and what do we get? Well, we get this. We divide out 3 out of each piece, so we have x squared minus 3x minus 24. And what we want to do here is find out what two numbers multiply to give us negative 24 and add to give us negative 3. What are they? Well, hopefully you're thinking x, so let's go through the product of negative 24. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 24? So 1 and 24. The bigger number is negative. 2 and 12, bigger number is negative. 3 and 8, bigger number is negative. 4 and 6 is negative. So what happened there? Well, none of these numbers will give us a sum of negative 3. So therefore, this is completely factored. We cannot factor it anymore. Whereas sometimes we can common factor and continue factoring, like the next example, but in this case, we actually have to stop here because there is no product that some values that work for this situation. And it can happen, folks. I, we're going to take out 4, and we're left with x squared minus x minus 3. What two numbers multiply give us negative 3 and add to give us negative 1? And that's going to be negative 3, positive 1. Oh, wait, nope, that didn't work either. Huh, interesting. There are no two numbers that multiply to give us negative 3 and add to give us negative 1. So guess what, folks? We're done the question. We can't go any further. Hmm. There must be an example that works with this situation. And there is. Let's look at another example. 2x squared minus 6x minus 80. So, common factor again. Take out the 2. There we go. And what two numbers multiply to give us negative 40 and add to give us negative 3? Well, negative 40 breaks up into the following pieces. 1 and negative 40, 2 and negative 20, 4 and negative 10, 5 and negative 8. That's right, folks, the very last one works. So it's going to be 2, bracket, x minus 8, bracket, x plus 5. And that is the factored step of this question. Remember, a common factor is the very first type of factoring you must attempt for all factoring questions. I don't know how much I stress that. Common factor first at all times. All right, k. Negative 3x squared plus 21x minus 36. Common factor. Try this question yourself by stopping the video now. Okay, folks, we're back. So, pull out the negative 3, and you get x squared minus 7x plus 12. And we factor again, negative 3, needs, and we need to factor the inside. So the product is 12, and the sum is negative 7. So that means we need both the signs to be negative. So negative 1 and negative 12, nope, doesn't work. Negative 2 and negative 6, nope, doesn't work. Negative 3 and negative 4, yep, that works, folks. So we get x minus 3 times x minus 4. And that works. So this is the fully factored step of the original k question. All right, one more. Let's try this. x squared minus 6x minus 72. All the combinations, look at these combinations, and you see that in these combinations, you have multiple possibilities. All right, this is going a little too fast, so let's go back again. So how do we get these values again, folks? So note again, product is negative 72. So here are all the possible products to give you negative 72. And you know, it's the last one, six minus six plus negative 12 gives us negative six, and six times negative 12 gives us negative 72. So guess what? You have x plus 6 and x minus 12 as your factors. All right, and what are the other possible factors of 72 or 8 and negative 9? 
All right, and that's where we would have stopped our question. All right, actually we can fit one more example. Let's do it. m negative x squared minus 15x plus 100. Again, very important for simple trinomials is the, the coefficient of x squared must be 1. Not negative 1 like this. It must be positive 1. So how do we get rid of that negative? We pull it out. So we pull out a negative, and it turns out to be x squared plus 15x minus 100. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is we need to now find what two numbers multiply to give you negative 100 and add to give you 15. So those numbers are going to be as follows, x plus 20 and x minus 5. All right, because 20 times 5, negative 5 gives you negative 100, and 20 plus negative 5 gives you positive 15. All right, moving forwards, last page. Example 2, you asked to determine the binomials that represent the dimensions of the rectangle, rectangular water garden. Determine the dimensions if x represents 10 meters. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 21. This is a rectangular water garden, and you're to find the binomials that made this. So the length and the width that made this. So you have the area is equal to this. Factor the question, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 21 and add to give you negative 4. Those of you thinking should be x minus 7 and x plus 3. And the last part, what you have to do is to determine the dimensions. Well, the dimensions are going to be 10 minus 7 by 10 plus 3. So first of all, we're going to look at in meters in uh, term, the binomials that represent the dimensions. And then if x equals 10 meters, you plug it in, you get 3 meters by 13 meters. And that gives you a total grand area of 39 meters squared, if that's the case that x is equal to 10 meters. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. And that's the end of simple trinomial factoring. Looking forward to working with you on complex trinomials. Have a numerical day.